Hey, Don here. Okay, getting ready to uh, touch up my caulking over here on the uh, side splash on my new sink. There's a couple, of, it shrunk quite a bit, and there's an air bubble that was there, one there. Looks like there was a tiny one up here, too. Yeah. It's, it's not much, but it might be letting a little water in there, and that's the whole point. As much as I hate to, it's hard to do that when you, uh, you want a tiny little bead there between that, and the, there's no crack there, really, you know, not much. Anyway, that tiny little bead's hard to make look good between the wood because it shows up so much. And, as I keep saying, since I can't see, I see all kinds of things that I never see until I get some real good light in here and get my glasses on. Uh, Dollar store. Well, I used to get them at the dollar store. I think I got all these that I've been using at Amazon. But uh, anyway, <coughs> we used to call them dime store glasses back in the olden days. And when I was young, and the old folks wore them. Now I'm the old folks. So, um, get my. So I shut the drain so they don't drop anything down in it. And I mentioned that before, but uh, I didn't think to say, I said, use a screw. That's a, you know, a three, three and a half inch screw. <coughs> and boy, that works good because it pulls the caulk back out with it. A nail uh, doesn't do that as well. And nails are more, uh, more prone to rusting. <coughs> making, uh, and it'll get on your caulk when you start squeezing it out. <coughs> I need a place to lay it. <clears throat> well, I got a paper towel in here. <coughs> I'll put it on there. <coughs> and, uh, you know, of course that's going to dry up there on the end. But uh, as long as it has a good path for it to caulk to be coming out, you're good. And I went and forgot to bring my roll of paper towels in here. I'm gonna run and get it. Sorry. Go in circles. I guess I'll put them right there. Okay. I'll use the smoother looking side. These are bounties, my favorite pepper towels. I hate to waste them, but I use those other cheap ones. I had some cheaper ones out in the garage. Uh, and I still have a few left, but I used those last time. And uh, oh, I forgot to get my dipping bucket. Gosh. Well, that's handy. I'll go get it. I spent 30 minutes running around in circles, I think, trying to get everything ready, and I still didn't get it all ready. Yeah, my, my lid for my dipping bucket is what I usually set my screw in. That's what I should have realized right away. So I don't know why it's dirty enough. Get some water in there. These uh, plastic folders, coffee dills, make real good buckets and bolt bins and Everything you can imagine. I don't drink it, uh, but and I like I like ground bean coffee, but uh, someone else in the house does, and so it's good to say I like saving. So let's see. I guess I'm gonna start around the corner. That's the tricky one. But last time, I guess I better get a little bit coming out first. I shouldn't have thrown that piece of paper towel away. I need something to squeeze some out on. That first bit sometimes, depending on how long it's been sitting, sometimes it doesn't like come out. There, yeah, it's kind of hard. And you can kind of see once it, oh, now it's coming out like crazy. So, uh, well, anyway, when you're caught, I gotta get doing it. It's just coming out like crazy. 
I don't want to just keep wasting cork. This too is not that full. Okay, so I'll make my V down here. And I'm going to stop because last time I really got myself in a little bit of trouble. Um, some of it, I put out too much and it's, some of it started wanting to dry. And then when you have to wet it down a lot to get it to spread again, you, uh, you wet it, the more you have to wet it down, the more it thins it out. And so, and, and, and uh, so anyway, I got that corner, front corner too wet and it uh, didn't have enough left. Of course, it's a tiny little spot anyway, so it's a tricky spot. But, uh, can I fold that over? I'm going to hit that. There we go. you got to figure out how to do your paper towel, how to fold it so that you don't just wipe more back on there. Like that. I'll get the rough cut done and then try to dress it up. That corner is tricky. No matter which way you go, you're either going to get it all in the wood or you're going to wipe it out of the corner. I think I did a little bit of both this time. Well, when I get the rest of it, I'm going to straighten up that whole line and then I'll work on that. Well, no, I better not. I don't want it sticking to that wood. Let's get it off that wood. So the getting's good. Last time I was just trying to be super particular about how much I've done on the wood and all I did was over wet it. And your glove can kind of work like your finger, but your finger really works better. But I sure do hate... Yeah, that's not working at all. Sure do hate having. I had a feeling before I started this. I hate having caulk under my fingernails. But I'm gonna pull my gloves off and work like a real man. When we were younger, when I was younger, I was a cabinet maker and did a lot of you know, building cabinets, building big built countertops sometimes, pressing for remodeling gloves. Uh, nobody wore gloves. You didn't wear gloves when you did mechanic work. There wasn't no such thing as mechanics gloves. Cuts and scrapes and calluses was a sign that you were a hard working man. And you're proud of them. Not that that's actually any better if you were just kind of juvenile, but. But, uh, and I would wear, I, I would wear gloves sometimes when I was doing some really of course, you wear gloves if you're welding or anything like that. Or I actually worked in a machine shop with a foundry when I was a, was my second my second job when I was a teenager, and uh, you wore gloves to do that stuff. Guaranteed. But uh, yeah, it's messing around with melted brass and molten brass and molten aluminum. You wear gloves. And I didn't come out of the world, I like to wear, I wear, I got me some real welding gloves because after a few times of getting sparks down in your gloves and then you can't get it off of it because it's down in your glove, you realize you want some welding gloves. Okay, but yeah, see I can do 10, 100 times better with my finger of forming that than I can with the glove. So it's just really silly to wear gloves when you're doing caulking and other than, of course, not getting it all over your fingernails. But see, like this up here, I'll be able to do a whole lot easier and better. Now, did I do a good job? Let's see. I'm going to fold that all the way over so that I don't accidentally get it all over the counter. Well... It's not perfect, that's for sure. That's as good enough. Okay. The 
job of the caucus to seal and keep water from getting in behind there and ruining that stuff. And I know full well what happens when you don't. Well, what I did was not keep up with recalking it because caulk don't stay forever. Taking both them gloves off, they're just bugging me now. Having one on and one off is weird <coughs> to my sensibilities. Okay, so yeah, that needs a little more. See a little spot, but it actually looks like it just might be. There was something that ought to come up there. I wiped it. I wipe it again before I start. Now I think it might be a little hole. I can't tell for sure. Or it's something that dried in there that's kind of ugly looking. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to start up here. Let's see. Up in there it looks perfect. So I'm not going to redo that. I'm going to start right here. Uh, oh, he's turned that off because it keeps squirting. Then I'm like, what? Right there. That didn't, that shrunk back a lot. It doesn't really matter because the water's going to run down from there. But if I can throw it in, it won't hurt. Okay, that might work. And see, this is how we normally do it. Actually, I always did it with just my fingers until I was taught the trick of using the wet paper towel. Now, see, I can get enough to go all the way back down there. And then I want to cover that spot where I sand it all the way through the finish. Really, I ought to come back and you see your finger won't get rid of all that it's some of that extra there that you get you always end up with let's get forming it with your fingers pretty good and then This form it just right. Kind of do it lightly so I don't drag it all off of there. There we go. You can still see a little there. It's really hard to just leave a little bit and not leave it ugly. That's what I'm trying to do on that corner. You can't see that in camera, I know, but I'm trying to. See, your finger won't take that off the wood there. Ah. It's good enough. I think I've done as good as I can do on that spot. Well, I'll try it again later. Throw that one away and get a new one. Now I've got to get this wiped out, and then I think I'll be done. Hopefully. This is a good time of day to do it. The sun is shining in, and I turn on the overhead light. We got some more up here above the mirror, but they make it really hot in here. And they were just kind of making a glare anyway. At this point here, this time of day. So, uh, yeah, I just missed it all up. I had it looking pretty good in that corner. Just I saw one little spot. There we go. A little finger fits in that place. Now, let's see. Of course, you can't rinse your pepper towel, but it never all comes off. So then if you could try to depend on that, you'll just be... Just looks like there's some caulking in this thing. You'll just be... Uh, Hit my magnifying glass again. Oh, that, it, I could barely see. It's so white, you know, I can only see. And I'll put my finger on that. I've got to round my finger, I mean. Yeah, let's get a new side here. Just want to make sure there's not a bunch of extra. You can't really. Once it dries, I mean, 
if it's real thick, you can take a razor blade knife, you know, and kind of. If I keep hitting that ping tone, I don't mess it up. I can see a little spot there, but I don't want to fix it the worse it gets. Water. Don't really want, I just made a, well, my finger was going to go wet and a little drop of water run down it. So that just makes it take longer to dry, but I'm not going to wipe it again. Okay, so. And the spot down there I'm not real happy with, but on the front, on the route of my wood there. And I hate to leave it because it's going to bug me. I can really. Of course, I don't have my glasses on. It may not much. Glasses on. It may not show up as much, but right now it shows up and it bugs me. And I can't fix it any better than that without ruining everything else. So I'm going to leave it right up alone. It's. I think it's small enough that I won't even see it when I have my glasses on. Let's see. Now, if I can put. I noticed that even in my, my video, you could see a lot that I couldn't see while I was working the last time. So uh, that may be the case right now. A lot of imperfections and stuff. Uh, all along here, I think I see a little extra on top. I'm going to put a little bit on my finger and I'm going to try one more time to... And I actually think I, I can see that bad spot that I made. more now than I could. And this time, I can dry that thing off a little better. I'm going to just use my finger in that area. It's not working. Try the paper towel again. <coughs> time I go back to re-smoothing it, that's a word, smoothing, I made it up, actually I think my kids made it up for me, and I was able to, now I got most of that back off of there, that's, I don't think I can do it, without making it look ugly, now it's just a little dark looking spot, I don't think it will actually hurt anything. So when I try to, what I need to do is clean that off and mix up. Of course, I don't. You can't really mix less than like four ounces of that gel coat, and it's expensive stuff. So I hate to do. You know, four ounces just for one little. Thing. But of course, buying a touch up kit would cost more than mixing what I've already got. But uh, that's what needs to be done. But it takes this, uh, depending on your mix, how you get your mix, it took this back flush up here, took, took about two months to dry in the summer. Out in the garage in the heat, and uh, this uh, this one here took a couple weeks. Might have been drying a week, but and that was a little cooler weather. But I got a better mix that time. Well, I mean, just the end. I didn't do the whole thing. Just the end. Well, I sprayed the back of it just to protect it back was you know raw and I thought well if water gets back there because I'm you know this stuff looks so porous it's uh boy it looks a lot worse when you can see it 
But if I keep touching it, I'm just going to mess it up. So, but I do see bad spots on the wood, like I was talking about, that I don't like. I just kind of like going to do the mat. You know what, that's so thin that if it bothers me after it dries, I could scrape that off with my fingernail. Spot right there. Because I'm just going to ruin it. I've got it as good as I can get it. So, that's it. I'm done. Okay, there was a little hunk of caulk, hunk of dry caulk in there. And this is not very dirty this time, so I'm just going to pull it in Normally, you would really don't want to do that because it'll just get that, the stuff will dry on your sink, that caulk. <coughs> like a film on it. And if you pour any chunks down there, you might have real problems. So just don't stop and clean it up. Then I'm going to go pour that side and spend some time in the yard. Okay, so uh, hopefully that'll be it. The rest of it's okay. The very top row up here shrunk. I mean, it was already dry last time, but it shrunk some, but not that much. And uh, get my hands cleaned up too. Get this caulk out from under my fingernail. There's a spot that I can't tell. I'll just look at. It looks like it might have a bump in it. I think it's where I touched it with water. Watery fingers. I wish they looked good for my house, but this is my house, so I gotta look at it. <laughs> we used to say that when we have trouble with something. And we tried to do real good work in that one cabin shop I worked in, and uh, but sometimes she, you know. You spend, I mean, you are trying to make money, too. You, know, you spend forever on every little thing, and you don't end up making money. Because, you know, the more more faster you can make them, the more, more money you can make. And, uh, of course, you make it. You, well, of course, we're making it for the boss. We got, we're paid by the hour. But but the thing was, is if you didn't uh, do good work and get it done quickly, then the, the builders would go find somebody else. So, you, gotta, you know, you got to do good work. <coughs> So, uh, <coughs> this up here, put my tools in my, I got my pants on with the tool pocket in them. Now, let's see, I got in here, yeah, right in here, I don't think I can do that, can I? Put a little more light on it, but it doesn't help. Um, yeah, right in here, there's actually a bump that I never saw until today. I don't know why. It's, it's dry, you know. But uh, And then this shrunk back quite a bit. But it actually looks good when you don't have your glasses on. This doesn't look bad. I just didn't know it was there. And so I'm not going to bother with it because I could. could put some more in there. But that's... It's not going to help anything, you know, and it really kind of looks better off in there, I think, than having them stick out. But that right there actually does stick out, but I can't see it except for with my glasses on and lots of light in the room. So, I'm going to leave it. Because I'm liable to just make it look worse. Well, I could probably, okay, maybe I just don't want to do it because I know I could do better than that. Alright, alright, I'll do it. That's why I, 
I kind of got this knife in case I wanted to do that. Could cut that off of that. You think cutting it off will make it alright? Let's see. You know what? This is okay now. That's all it really needed. Just like I said, I never saw it until I got in here today with all the light from the sun and the light overhead and my glasses. And I mean, I was like, oh, I didn't know that was there. Yeah, that's good enough. I don't want to add more to that. It doesn't need more. And the tars I tried on everything, I still didn't get. One little spot kind of bugs me, but it's not really smooth. Right up here. And I know that I won't see it. Once it's dry, now that it's kind of been drying a little bit, I might be able to get it kind of put that even in. Or I'll make a horrible mess of it. It's kind of going both ways. It gets better and then worse. There. That's better. Okay. That's better. Except for I messed that up now. Well, you fix it. Well, you messed it up. Sometimes. Okay. Live with that. If you touch it again, you're going to win it. Okay. So, I don't know if the camera was even showing what I was doing. I forgot I moved it. Yeah, it was. Okay, so, this time I really need it. I'm done. And, uh, that should be the end of my sink and it's flash install. Should be a long time before I have to re coffee or anything. And I, that'll shrink up probably some. But, uh, you know, there's already was enough in there to keep the water. But the water wouldn't go at the bottom. It wouldn't go up in there because the sink is beveled. And it gets lower as you, uh, you know, the edges are high and it's beveled quite a bit for about three quarters of an inch. And then it gets lower. As you go, I'll show that in there. I keep talking about it. So the sink itself, I'll just show it this. this is, well, let's go out here. Okay, now this is the core, you know, this is what I've been working on. And uh, that's where I put new caulk. And that was the part with the wood and the joint that it was wrong. I was having so much trouble with. And here's the bevel that is a good drop of about a quarter inch, and it's about three quarter inch wide bevel. So I got that on, when I saw that sink, I was like, that's the one I need because water's always, you know, running off in the floor. And it ran up against, all constantly was up against this cabinet when it didn't have a splash with the old flat sink. And it ruined it. I never did, and the, and the caulk got bad and, you know, had crack. It was loose. It got old and came loose. and Water was going down in there, and uh, for ten or about ten years, and uh, with my health being bad, I never felt up to doing it. When I felt good, I did something else, you know, and uh, it rotted it out. And so, if you've seen in these early videos where there were still some bad spots left that this splash covers, and this extra splash back here again, if you hadn't already seen it in another video, that is only there because when I rebuilt, I rebuilt this whole vanity cabinet, and. Uh, I just built a new one from scratch because it was the side of it was messed up up and behind the wall, and uh, and I made it too deep by accident. I measured it a hundred times and still got it wrong every time uh, for the top. You know, so the top was flush with the front just about. It has like a, maybe a quarter inch overhang, and that would just let water just run on that door, and that's what happened to it before. Anyway, to a certain extent, see, I sanded it down to the. Sanded it down to the wood in some places. See, that's some of that. I mean, it's covered. It's been re-varnished with quite several coats. But, uh, so it's protected again. But I didn't want you getting, you know, water on it again. And, uh, so, and this, actually this only got re-varnished up to about that high. The rest of it was all right. And I took the, the door, I was going to, take it outside and redo the whole thing, but I got to where I couldn't. My, my brother finished the doors for me, 
and uh, I had them. Well, he took these down and redid them. And these down here, I had them out in the garage, and I redid the front face. It's hard to get a good video of that. I redid the face of that uh, bottom linen. They're two piece. I remade, made a new face frame for it, face plate. What we call them? We used to call them either face. We used to call it face plates, and then everybody started calling them face frames. But anyway. Uh, and those doors, I originally made these cabinets in about 98 or something like that, but the doors, when I was a cabinet maker, I did make doors like that, but you know, it takes expensive equipment that I don't have. And uh, I knew a guy that was working in a cabinet shop, and he made them for me for a good price. And then I made some trim to go between them. And, uh, let's see. I kind of messed up and I forgot and I routed both sides of it and so it's routed on both sides and I forgot I needed to make a 45. I cut all that out and didn't remember it until I brought it in here. Now I just didn't want to do it again. But, uh, get out here. Try to show one last look at the whole cabinet set up. It's too close in there to show it good. But, uh, oh, slow. But they're going to, they're all right now. We just need a new bathtub and a new mirror. I don't think I can get, of course, there's my stuff I've been using to work with over there sitting on the toilet seat. But, uh, and the phone is on this tripod that I was using, so it's kind of keeping me from getting back. I could get back a little bit further. Anyway, it's finally done. Oh, I don't think I can do that. I thought I could do that. Anyway, I set the tripod down on the floor, and I can just see it. I'm trying to loosen it where I can move it, but I'm probably going to jerk it. That just about gets the whole set, doesn't it? I'm barely able to see the screen of the camera now. But, uh, anyway, I won't try to go any harder than that because I can't tell what I'm doing. I can't see it. Okay, so, we're done. Yeah, there's the old mirror thing. See, it needs replacing. But, uh, Cabinets are good again. Okay, it's done. And that is my new sink splash and my redone cabinets. All right, bye.